Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen. I know it's been a bit of a while since we've seen you guys, but I'm Charlie O'Connor-Clark alongside Mitchell Tierney. And welcome to Season 6. Uh, this is the, the first one of this series we're doing. We're previewing the 2024 Canadian Premier League season. Um, you know, we're going to do a, a tight 10 minutes on each of the eight Canadian Premier League clubs playing in the 2024 season. Uh, and we're going to... Uh, Try to get to it as quickly as possible here. So, Mitch, the way this is going to work is we've got five hot questions for each team in the CPL. I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock here. That's how long we have to answer these questions. We have to be tight. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of it, hopefully you've learned something about one of the eight CPL clubs. We're going to do a team every day. We're going to start at the very top of the table with today Cavalry Football Club. So I'm going to put I'm literally putting 10 minutes on the clock here. I'm going to set a timer. Do we get hydration break, stoppage time? Absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely okay. not. Uh, at the end of this club, we've already wasted like 10 seconds. Ready? <laughs> let's go. So question number one for Cavalry FC. Easy. How do they prevent a championship hangover? This team won the league by 13 points last year, 55 points in total. Obviously uh, didn't lift the cup after the final, but still won a league title. Mitch, what do you do after a, a season where you kind of run away with the, the regular season like that? Well, to build on kind of the last part of what you said there, I think it is critical that they did lose that final. Not not in terms of, you know, obviously they would have wanted to win it, but in terms of not having a championship hangover, like that will be the moment that all these players can kind of remember is being on Tim Hortons field and watching their rivals lift the trophy. So in terms of a championship hangover, obviously that will be their motivation. And I also think internal competition is huge. I think the the new signings that they have brought in do lend themselves to, you know, pushing some of those established players uh, or previously established players within the club to play at new heights. And maybe, you know, they don't have the the positional stability that they thought they did the, the year before. So I think that'll be very helpful. And, you know, that internal competition will ideally extend it or lend itself to external competition and and to once again, you know, pushing those standards higher within the league. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. This is a group that knows that they have that extra step to take. And, and we've spoken about it before. They know what they left last season with that bitter taste. Uh, and it's a team that's only, I think, gotten better. I think maybe more so than any other team in this league. They didn't really lose. They didn't lose a single member of their starting 11 from the final, which is the first time a CPL club has ever done that. Brought back all 11 players from the previous year's final. Uh, and they've only added, they've added Diego Gutierrez, they've added uh, Tobias Roshevsky. We're going to get to those in a little bit, but we are flying along here very well, Mitchell. Uh, but question number two, we saw Cavalry play already this year in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Uh, they played Orlando City. Result didn't go their way, but it was a first taste of that. What, okay, you've written, what can Cavalry take away from their conch experience? <laughs> uh, with this kind of compound word here. And I'm but, glad like, you read it. <laughs> I yeah I had to but I had to make sure everybody knows that you wrote that uh <laughs> what can they take away from what we saw in, in the Champions Cup from their conch experience thank you very much but um yeah Don't waste I do time think, here let's go <laughs> I do think um you know we've seen what this has done for Forge in the past in, in terms of um, playing against different competitions you know this is a league still that's small and you play the same teams four times a season if not more in the Canadian championship so um, it is good to test yourself against different competitions and in competitive competition as well it should be added um, so I think that always helps the team and you know I also do think like you mentioned that they're probably the team that has gotten a bit better and or sorry the most better I guess and I do think that's true but at the same time you know, you look around the league and almost every team's gotten better. So Calvary need to reach that next level. Well, they got to experience what it looks like to play against and be at that next level against Orlando. So um, I, I think that that's very helpful um, as well in, in this matchup. So I think it will only serve them, you know, incredibly well going into the season. But you were down there, obviously, with them during this mm -hmm. uh, during this experience. So is there anything that, you know, you kind of observe that you think will really help them? Yeah, I think what I what I noticed most from them kind of before and then after these games, both in Langford and Orlando, was that it's one thing to look at tape and to talk about the team you're going to play. And it's it was clearly very different even at halftime of those games after they'd had a little bit of experience and seeing what it was actually like when Facundo Torres is on your back and and, you know, burning down the wing and, and 
assisting goals against you. Like there, there's kind of that difference that you can't really prepare fully for without having actually experienced it. And I think the most important thing for Cavalry is that they have now experienced it for the first time. We saw it with Forge before in, in CONCACAF competitions. Once you get there and you know what it's like, you're desperate to get back to it. And I think that's something that will motivate Cavalry a lot more this year. Last year, they talked a lot about how they wanted to be there. This year, they know they want to be there. They know that they want to be in this tournament next year. And they know now how to get there. And that's through the CPL. So question number three, how important was it for Cavalry FC to add more attacking options this year? Obviously, they've done that with you know Tobias Roszewski coming in, Leighton Brooks, an Australian forward. You might even say that Lucas Diaz had some attack. Uh, I mean, even even Diego Gutierrez. How important was it to add that depth to this side, Mitch? Yeah, I mean, it seemed to me almost like their off-season signings were in direct relation to the way that CPL final went. And, you know, if you were Tommy Wielden Jr. in that final and you could look down your bench late in that match or an extra time and you had Leighton Brooks and Tobias Horshevsky and, you know, Lucas Diaz and, and Diego Gutierrez um, there, you know, maybe instead of some of the options they had, I think that match maybe ends up a little bit differently. So I think that that was maybe the next step in the evolution for this club is having different attackers that could come off the bench and and change a match. Obviously, they, they lost one of those uh, when Gautier and Tigny um, left the club late in the season. So, yeah, I think that this only makes them more dangerous and they can have different looks. And, you know, Ali Musi only needs to play 60 minutes so he can just really go at defenders more for those 60 and come out. Or Willie Accio, same thing. Like, they don't have to worry about going the full 90 and pacing themselves. There's There's players now that can come in and make an impact. So I think it's huge for them. And I think it's probably the biggest thing they needed to address this offseason. And it really seems like they've done that. Yeah, for sure. This team asked Meyer Bevan to, sc to score a lot of their goals last year, and he obviously is one of the best in the league at doing that. But I think now there's more options. You know, we saw Tobias Warshevsky start the first CONCACAF game because, you know, Bevan hadn't been in training quite as long. I think he just had another kid. Congratulations, Meyer, obviously. But uh, maybe, maybe you're not at your, your peak form after you've become a father for the second time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think all of those options are very good for this team. You know, we saw them bring Ali Musi off in the final when they were up, and then you know, the 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 attack kind of wasn't there after they'd uh, after they'd been scored on. The wind came out of their sails. But I think having those options, those different looks, you can throw at teams, especially when you see a team four times a year, and they've all seen pretty much the exact same cavalry team all of last year as well. That's super valuable. We are okay. We have three minutes left. Question number four. We're gonna we're gonna fly through this though. Which new signing, we've just mentioned a lot of them, which new signing will have the biggest impact? There's an easy answer that I think you're going to take, so I will let you go first. Yeah, the easy answer is Diego Gutierrez. Um, I think this is a player that fits the Cavalry system perfectly. He can play anywhere in that midfield. And I really think he's got another level that he can reach that maybe, you know, he wasn't able to in Valor last season. You know, he was one of the league leaders in chance, chances created and, if he's playing those same balls into Ali Musi, into William Accio, into Meyer Bevan, you know, I think they're probably ending up in, in more goals than they did in the past. So, yeah, this is a player that, I, you know, I think is one of the best midfielders in the Canadian Premier League, and he's joining the best team in the Canadian Premier League as of last season. So whenever that happens, you're, you, you just sit back and you want to see what, you know, what takes place. 100%. Uh, I think the easy second answer is obviously Toby Warshevsky. We've seen what he did in the CPL with FC Edmonton a couple years ago. Uh, I think, what, what is it? Let's count it as 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 goals and 14 assists in two years for FC Edmonton. Quick Double digits is is nothing to, to sniff at over two years. That's very, very impressive, especially on, you know, let's be honest, a team that didn't have a lot of depth and was struggling at times and, and at the bottom of the table. I do also, you know, we're running tight here. I do also want to shout out under the radar, maybe Jack Barrett, goalkeeper coming in from Edmonton, not necessarily just because he's going to make a big impact on the pitch, but because I think that it's the first time in a while that Marco Carducci has had somebody pushing him for those minutes and that kind of competition. And that's important for every single player at every level, no matter if you're you know, the captain of the team, the most experienced player, the first name on the team sheet, which in many senses Carducci is, you need to have that guy over your shoulder and you are mentoring him, but you also don't want to lose your job. And I think that's very important for Marco Carducci to continue to keep that motivation and that competition in training. Um, all right. Final question here. We have one minute and seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. I'm stalling. What does 
success look like for Cavalry FC in 2024? Mitch, I think there's only, this is probably the easiest club to answer this question for, right? I need one second, North Star Cup. Like it's at the end of the day, that's the one trophy, you know, that still isn't in their cabinet. Obviously, look, they'll want to get back to CONCACAF. That'll be the overall overarching goal. But the only way that it's a true success is if they do that via winning and lifting the North Star Cup finally. That's exactly it. It's that simple. Uh, Obviously, they want to get back to CONCACAF. Winning the league again would be huge for them. But they spoke about this like several times spoken about it publicly i know that the players feel this the group feel this. the coaching staff feel this they know how to be consistent in the cpl they're arguably better than anybody at it and have been over five years they know that they've got that you know reputation for not getting it done in those championship games in those big moments and they're desperate to turn that around and i think you know they, they know that and they're solely focused on that and i think that you know there's a very good chance that that is you know what they what they strive for this year so my phone is literally going off right now we did it. We did it. 10 minutes on the dot. Again, we're going to be doing this uh, this tight 10 minutes for all eight teams in the CPL running down the table from last season. Thank you very, very much for watching or for listening if you're listening on the podcast. Uh, if you're with us on YouTube or on the website, we thank you very much for watching and we will speak to you next time.